know, I, I learned when I was a kid that philosophers, their form of interaction is one person has a theory and then somebody else says, no, that's wrong. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then they all, uh, you know, cheerfully um, go out to, you know, the, the pub or whatever afterwards. And then even though they were vigorously attacking each other, but that would be my, my immediate response. I mean, I've not heard that particular uh, story before, but, but that will be my immediate response no, to that. No, that's good. I interviewed this uh, very famous number theorist at Columbia, um, Michael Harris, who's very, very interested in philosophy as well. And he said that as far as he can tell, the way philosophers work is that they just try to trash everybody else's um, theories. And that that's how philosophy progresses. But yeah, when I was a kid, I, I always said, you know, any field where you're still arguing about things that people talked about 2000 years ago is a field where no progress has been made. <laughs> it's a field where, you know, but I think, uh, actually, I have, maybe we'll talk about it later. We'll talk about mathematics, perhaps, and, and progress in mathematics. I think there are, I have a, in, in, you know, half a century later, I have a slightly more nuanced view of what, what I think progress means and so on. But uh, well, okay, that, that's that that's is a something digression. that I would like to get into eventually, if you want to, because I've had a number of episodes on the podcast precisely about um, progress in mathematics and whether or not there are uh, genuine revolutions. But as far as philosophical progress is concerned, I I'm in agreement with you in that it's it does seem like every philosophical program fails and i'm i'm taking a number of ancient philosophy courses at the moment right now and we are very much discussing the same problems that we discussed uh 2000 years ago but at the same time uh biology uh physics all of these disciplines began with philosophy and then once there was Absolutely. some sort of tractable methodology for solving problems they then became their own special sciences and it's the same with mathematics so i don't think it's entirely fair to say that there isn't progress in philosophy it just sort of changes no, i think one of the things that i found interesting recently is you know i think philosophy is about to be a growth industry again oh that's because good i think as you know, as we find out that specialized knowledge, which is what a lot of kind of traditional scientific knowledge has turned into being, that you know a lot of that is automatable, and so yes. the the contribution of us humans becomes much more the global thinking thing, which is much more the province of philosophy than than you know that than it is the the sort of the traditional STEM fields and so on. I think you know the thing I've realized recently is that kind of computation is kind of a a lifting of the, the and what we see even with large language models and semantic grammar and all these kinds of things is again a lifting out of the philosophical discourse into something more formal of something which has long lived in the kind of domain of philosophical discourse so i think that's a you know that in a sense is uh, i agree with you that you know philosophy is this kind of uh, primordial vat uh, from which all kinds of other more formal, you know, more the ability of something like mathematics or, you know, many of the physical sciences and so on to build this tower of sort of formal tower is, is something that, you know, philosophy is still arguing back and forth in the kind of primordial vat. And then when you start having a formalism that lets you build kind of a, a real tower is when you kind of emerge out of, out of that vat. And I think that's, that's you know, that's happening in a, in a whole range of areas where we might not have expected it to happen as a result of kind of the computation idea. Computation is the modern vast generalization of kind of what I think happened with logic as a kind of an early example of formalization uh, back in the day. But I, I think, I mean, in, in um, uh, this, this whole question, I mean, to me, it's often interesting that, you know, at the beginning, the discussion is a philosophy, ethics discussion, something like that. In the end, you've got to write a piece of code that does something, mm -hmm. and so you know, philosophy to code is a very kind of uh, it's a it's a funny thing because I know in, in my own sort of life and times, you know, I spent a lot of my life building computational language, and a lot of these questions that you know, my mother worked on all these questions and philosophical logic about identity and all this kind of thing, and it's like, I, oh, who cares about this? <laughs> I said, um, mm -hmm. and then I realized that you know, when you're dealing with 
oh, I don't know, you know, you have a lambda expression and it's got bound variables. And what's, you know, there's another lambda expression and, you know, it's got other bound variables. And what are they the same? Are they not the same? What does this mean? I'm doing that right and, now, and actually. Throwing... What's that? I'm doing that right now, actually, in computability right. and so, logic. Right. So, so you're throwing right into that. So, uh, a lot of these kind of old philosophical issues. Another thing that's been interesting to me in, in thinking about fundamental physics and kind of the foundational models of the universe is a lot of questions that had been, uh, you know, were kind of, well, for example, a question like, why does the universe exist? Which I have to say, I, I didn't think would ever have a kind of a, a hard answer. That question now as a result of our physics project we can actually discuss that question and in a in i think a very kind of hard almost formal way and i think the answers are fairly interesting and uh, i think we kind of have an argument for why the universe exists but what's what i find interesting about that is that that question is a question that has been kind of out of discourse for a few hundred years it's something the theologians talked about back in the day it's something that never really engaged with science and now as a result of kind of this sort of computational paradigm for thinking about things, we get to engage with a bunch of these questions that have been kind of out of science and only in philosophy for a long time. 